Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. We all know monks collect relics and of course are useful in conversions when in small numbers, but what about when it comes to healing? It's not something that's done all that often, but does adding a few monks to passively heal during a battle have a noticeable impact? If so, how does it compare to conversions? And what about healing units in castles? In this video, I'll be looking at lots of questions about monks and healing, both during and after combat, to hopefully put all these things into perspective. Let's check it out. To start simply, monks and now missionaries in Definitive Edition heal 150 HP per minute. It might look like simple hand waving, but it really seems to work. From that rate, we'd expect 4 monks to then heal 600 HP per minute. But of course it doesn't work that way, that'd be far too easy. Each additional monk healing the same unit only adds half that amount. In this example, instead of 600, 4 monks are healing about 375. The simplest way to think of it is that the first monk to start healing a unit heals at double the normal rate, meaning it's better to spread them out, which, as it just so happens, is a behavior they'll do all on their own. Unfortunately, a result of that is they won't heal a unit automatically with multiple monks in any situation. You have to manually task multiple monks to heal a unit if you want them to do that. Another bit of monk behavior to note is that there's a 2-3 to three second delay in switching between healing units. So if you have a lot of units with a small amount of damage, you'll be getting significantly less healing than the 150 HP per minute you'd expect. The maximum healing range is about 4 tiles and is unaffected by block printing, which only increases conversion range. For Teutons, the maximum healing range is double that at 8 tiles, making them particularly useful in practice because they don't need to be in the middle of the action. Monks obviously have some issues with low HP, no armor, and a high cost, so they really shouldn't be that close to enemy units. Those are the basics about monks and how they heal, so now let's look at how much they can actually help a battle. To get a baseline for comparison, I'll start by excluding conversions, though we'll see how that impacts things a bit later. With ranged units around, you also want to be careful with monks, so for now I'm going to focus on Castle Age Knights and Elephants here. In a very Christmassy looking fight, we have 20 versus 20 knights, which should be evenly balanced. But what happens if we throw in 4 monks to heal Green's units? Instead of a balanced fight, we have Green ending with about a third of its collective HP left, which, after giving the monks a while to heal, gives them back 10 full strength knights out of their original 20. That's 400 gold worth of monks, giving 900 resources in value before and 1350 after another minute. That's definitely more than I expected, but of course this isn't really a fair test, since there's an extra 400 resources thrown in on one side. In terms of total resources, 3 knights cost about the same as 4 monks though, so how would 20 knights hold up against 17 knights and 4 monks healing them? This leads to a very different result, with red winning with around a third of their HP left. Based on this, I'd say while healing looks strong when we throw monks into an already balanced fight, a bit of healing isn't going to overcome even a relatively modest disadvantage. So far, this has also been assuming that you can protect the monks, which is also much easier said than done. It's a similar result with Battle Elephants, where with roughly equal resources of 15 Battle Elephants against 13 Elephants and 4 Monks, the Monks just don't give enough value with healing to really justify their cost. Just for some variety, you also see a similar thing with post-Imperial Halberdiers, where with balanced total resources, you're better off going all Halberdiers than swapping a few for an equal cost of Monks. What I take away from this is that a bit of passive healing from monks is good when you have a perfectly balanced fight, or one where you have the advantage. But anytime you're at a disadvantage, monks with healing alone will rarely if ever manage to make up the difference and snatch victory from defeat. You can kind of see why by thinking about the numbers as well. Monks heal 150 HP per minute, so it's kind of like they're adding an extra knight to your side over the course of a minute, or another battle elephant every two minutes. Fights just don't typically last long enough for that to make up for an initial disadvantage. I can see the argument for use in free-for-alls though, where battles can be one-sided as you attack a weaker player or someone stretched across the map. In that case, healing can be a way to maintain an army's strength over a series of smaller fights and as a way to conserve resources. I'll come back to the connection between healing and resources a bit later, but first let's take a look at the trade-off between healing and conversions here. Conversions are incredibly effective, because not only are you taking a unit from your opponent, but you're also adding one to your side. It's effectively the same as adding two units to your army, one to negate theirs, plus an extra one left over. It's no wonder the conversion sound is so anxiety-provoking, as it can really swing a fight. 
I'll do the same tests again, but this time allow the monks to convert, which admittedly becomes difficult to do efficiently in large numbers, but with three or four monks, it seems reasonable. In the case where 17 knights and four monks originally lost to 20 knights with the monks healing alone, we now have a solid victory from green. With a few conversions to even the numbers and then a bit of added healing, I think this is a better representation of how monks can impact a battle. In the battle elephant test, green also lost using healing alone, but even converting just two elephants leads to a comfortable win. If instead they're able to convert four different elephants, then the battle becomes quite one-sided. Again, you're taking units away from your opponent while adding them to your side, and with something like elephants, that adds a lot of value. It's important not to lose context here though. These are high value units that monks counter, and on a scale that is possible to micro. This works in the mid game against knights, elephants, and high value unique units, but isn't gonna work in a trash fight where your opponent is spamming hazards. Getting back now to focusing just on healing, what about healing valuable units after a fight? It should go without saying that in practice, you don't wanna always be sending your units across the map after every fight, as that would pretty quickly kill your momentum, but let's say the opportunity presents itself. To put some numbers on the value of a quick heal, I think it's helpful to frame it as a way to generate resources. The way I picture it, if you can heal a unit back from 1 HP to full health, it feels somewhat comparable to training a brand new unit, but without the cost. We'll say for a group of knights, every 120 HP of healing a monk can give you is indirectly giving you 60 food and 75 gold in value, which is the cost of a knight. It's not quite the same thing as I would take a brand new knight and a 1 HP knight over just a fully healed one, but let's see where it takes us. Looking at it that way, healing can give some pretty decent value, especially for units with a high cost for their HP. Very roughly, with knights, for example, each monk healing is like having 8 more villagers collecting resources during that time period if you were to pay for new units equivalent to what's being recovered. Here's a list of that same calculation for other Castle Age units, and keep in mind for Byzantines, these numbers are all 50% higher. I'm focusing on Castle Age here since in the late game you tend to float more resources and have a larger economy, so min-maxing feels less important except in the case of gold. Of course, healing gold intensive units can also provide a different kind of value in free-for-alls or 1 vs 1 games. Something I find interesting and actually makes sense when you think about it is elephants don't provide amazing value to heal, simply because while they're expensive, they also have a ton of HP. It's the ratio of HP to resources that makes a unit look good from this perspective. With relatively low HP but expensive units like Conquistadors and other cavalry archer variations giving the best value on the face of it. Of course, crossbows technically give great value by this measure, but are so often killed in a single volley or mangonel shot, I'm not sure this one's really going to translate as well in practice. The fact that monks can follow elephants and keep up is also something that isn't captured here, but definitely adds to their value. But while I focused on the monk a lot in this video, there's actually a whole other way to heal, which is in a town center, castle, or tower. It turns out that castles heal at double the rate of town centers and towers at 12 versus 6 HP per minute. Of course, the monk is 150, so right away that sounds pretty terrible. This is where herbal medicine comes in though, and gives 6 times the healing rate to buildings. In practice, a castle full of 20 damaged units ends up healing about as fast as 10 monks. To put some numbers to it, if you throw 20 elite mangadai into a castle to heal, then during the 30 seconds or minute they're healing, it's as if you've added another 100 villagers to your economy. Adding to that, you can still create more mangadai with your castles while they heal anyway, and come back with an even bigger army than if you'd thrown those units away and created new ones. It's a somewhat dramatic example, but every now and then a situation might come up where that's worth remembering. So to put it all together, based on the testing, I think using monks to heal mid-battle is nice as an extra little thing, but not if it's at the cost of actual units in a close fight. It only looks good to me in situations where you have the advantage already and can keep your monks safe. Aztecs with extra HP or Teutons with double the healing range would be better suited to this than a lot of other civilizations. For actual conversions on a small scale, monks are great and can definitely swing a fight. In basically all cases, I'd say prioritize conversions over healing, though in a large scale fight that's obviously not going to be as practical. In terms of healing after a fight, that's a bit more of a judgement call. You want to think about momentum and keeping a presence on the map, as opposed to running back to heal every time you start to get the upper hand. I think that's a lot of why you don't see healing done very often in practice. When the right opportunity presents itself though, the value is definitely there to justify healing a damaged army with either monks or herbal medicine and a castle. I especially like the idea with variations of the cavalry archer, where maintaining a high number of them is important. 
Healing is probably underused a bit in general, but it's also micro intensive, and I think a lot of players just end up preferring to focus on other things. My goal wasn't to argue either in favor or against healing, though in making this video I think I'm now more likely to consider healing than I have been in the past. That's all for this one though, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.